Now, while integer overflows and underflows are the big hitter issue that causes the most trouble, there are a bunch of other related integer issues that can also cause vulnerabilities to be exploitable. So we're going to cover the incorrect sanity checks or insanity checks, as I like to call them, signed or unsigned integer truncation and the signed integer extension. So first, insanity checks. What are those? Well, 50% of the time, it works 100% of the time. That's what developers say when they're using signed values to do sanity checks, because 50% of the values are positive, so it'll work, right? So let's go back to our original stack buffer overflow type vulnerability. We've got attacker controlled input here being passed into size. And then now, because we're so much older and wiser, we're going to add a sanity check. If size is greater than 100, the size of the buffer, nice try attacker, but I'm too clever for you. There you go. Well, unfortunately, no, this is a signed size. And that means this is an insanity check. That sanity check is not actually going to do anything because an attacker can cause this to be a value that is negative and the negative value will never be greater than 100 and consequently it will not be caught and it will proceed on into this attacker controlled mem copy. The result, if we ran it like this, 10 and OST2 rules, great, it works. And oh, we put 100 in and now nice try attacker, but I'm too clever for you. Thumbs up and success and we're finished, right? Well, no, because if an attacker passed in eight and seven zeros, then it successfully bypassed the sanity check or insanity check and led to a buffer overflow. So this is what you should be like when you're a developer and your sanity check fails. You should be questioning your existence and you should be saying, no, why? And this is what you should be like when you're an attacker and their sanity check fails. Super happy. So now let's just look at a few more quick examples of that. Same idea, you know, this was our more complicated version from before. We've got our attacker controlled value coming in, size is attacker controlled, and we're checking it for hex 1000, right? Same idea, size is once again signed, and consequently, this is an insanity check. So, boom, it's all good for low values, but 2000, sure, looks like it's working, but if the attacker provides all Fs, then they will successfully bypass the sanity check, the insanity check, and they will successfully integer overflow and lead to an under allocation over copy. And again, developer says, why? And the attacker says, so happy. So again, same idea. Well, you know, this code could be improved. Let's check for the, you know, integer overflow itself, right? Let's Let's do this. Let's see if that's going to be too big for this, you know, 32-bit value that it could potentially store. Well, no, all you've done there is you've given yourself an insanity check plus acid math, right? So the acid math will once again overflow right here before you ever even get a chance to do the sanity check. And of course, once more, why? Why? And the attacker is like, because I'm happy to cap along if you feel like a room without a roof, because I'm happy, and so forth. Now see, I've told other OST2 instructors that they can sing in their class if they want to, but so far no one has actually taken me up on that. But really, you know, here's the thing you should be thinking if you're a developer. You see how happy that makes the attackers when your sanity check fails, right? How much joy that brings it. Don't you want to take that joy from them? Don't you want to steal that happiness from the attackers? You should. You should want to do that by doing the appropriate sanity checks. Now, at this point, the attackers are probably thinking, hey, wait a second, whose side are you on? I'm on the defender's side, but I'm still going to teach you how to find vulnerabilities because you're a necessary component to a healthy immune system. Moving on, integer truncation. Well, you know, it's probably fine, right? If I just take a large value and truncate it down to a smaller value. Here's an example where we have our unsigned int. Oh, whew, it's unsigned. We're not gonna have any signedness issues. And we have a unsigned short allocation size. And then essentially we have this opportunity for an injury overflow and opportunity for truncation. It's ultimately going to be acid math plus truncation as a 32-bit value from the unsigned size gets truncated down to a 16-bit value for the allocation size, which will lead to our classical under allocation over copy. Net result, you know, you can pass in something like hex 100 and it's all good, but if you pass in something like hex 10,000, 
then that will ultimately exceed the available 16-bit bounds and that will again lead to an under allocation and over copy. Sign extension, and this is a heart getting bigger by the way, not smaller. Sign extension would be situations where, for instance, you're doing pointer arithmetic on signed values and those small little 16-bit signed values that you don't worry about can all of a sudden become big 64-bit negative values that you absolutely should worry about. So here is some new simple trivial code. We've got a buffer, we've got pointer one, pointer two, size one, hex 8,000, size two, eight and seven zeros, and pointer one is going to be buff plus size one. So, all right, so it's buff plus 8,000. Well, that's clearly gonna be an out of bounds type of thing, but that's not the point right now. Buff plus 8,000 and bluff, buff plus hex eight and seven zeros. All right, so what are the values going to be when we print all of this out? Well, these unfortunately are signed shorts and signed ints. And that means that sign extension is going to be in play. So this 8,000 is not going to be buff plus 8,000. It's going to be negative 8,000. And that's going to be buff minus 8,000. So your pointer is actually going to point before the buffer. So something like this, if we looked at the buffer address, it'd be 7, FF, CC, 42, et cetera. This is going to be randomized if you, you know, run this on your own system. But the relevant point is that it started out at 42A something. And then when you added 8,000, which was a signed value, which was actually negative 8,000, then you start at 42.9 something. So you've actually gone to a lower address, which is outside of the bounds. So you went backwards instead of forwards. Same problem with the 32-bit version, or yeah, the 32-bit version. It again subtracted hex eight and seven zeros. This is a 64-bit uh, address, and consequently you went backwards in memory. So the overall point of this section is that almost all the time, you probably don't need to be using signed integers. Yes, if you're doing you know, some funky math for, you know, you're doing a math library, maybe in some cases you're doing you know, XYZ Cartesian coordinates, something like that, sure, then you need negative numbers. But like I would say like 99% of the time, the reason someone uses a signed int instead of an unsigned int is just because it's shorter to type, right? Right, you're guilty of it, I'm guilty of it, everybody's guilty of it. It's just easier to type int than unsigned int, right? Well, you know, I agree that that's too much work to type unsigned int, so that's what type defs were invented for. You can, you know, change unsigned int to uint or something like that, or ui, I don't know, I don't care, just don't use signed integers. If I were to make this an even stronger statement, I would say def to signed integers. I would say signed sizes are insane and signed lengths should leave. Signed offsets are out and signed counts can take a hike. All right, so these sort of things that you find in the code, sizes, lengths, offsets, and counts, well, whenever I see those kind of things, signed sizes should signal your spoity sense. They certainly signal my spoity sense. Basically, if I look through some code and I see a whole bunch of ints being used and I see them being named like size, length, etc., then I know that this is not hardened code and, you know, I start thinking, ooh, goody, goody because this means this is a developer who isn't aware of these kind of problems that can occur both for integer overflows or for these uh, other integer issues. And if I took it just one step further, I would start going for something like some Fahrenheit 451 dystopian propaganda where I say that you should lead a sign size slaughter on your code today. All right, and let's add in some 1984 as well because Big Brother is watching. Well, you know, the point is sign sizes are bad and you should get rid of them. Let's go look at some real examples of why this is true.